So besides the World Wingsuit League, uh, me and Frank also collaborate with Jeb Corliss to, to produce a lot of his like big mega stunts in China. Me and Jeb go way back, like we met back in I think it was 99, we were hiking up this mountain in Norway and uh, it was during that one of those hikes when I actually realized that we have very similar aspirations and goals in life, which at that time were very specific, <laughs> very hardcore old school base jumping goals and ever since 99 we became inseparable for for a long time so we still great friends but but now our friendship took a, took a step to a next level so we also work a lot together now uh, we've been in a pre-production mode for his flying dagger stunt where he's gonna fly through this like crack on a mountain it's gonna be like crack 2.0 it's a geological anomaly i've never seen anything quite like it basically i stuck my arms out and I had like maybe four feet on each side. And I'm like, whoa, I mean, this is, it's very narrow. I mean, super narrow and it just goes straight up. And when you look up, the visual of it is really quite impressive. So the proportions of this thing are, are absolutely unbelievable. The crack is what, like three football fields long. It's about height of, a, of an Eiffel Tower. And at the top, it's the size of a school bus. And at the bottom, it gets even more narrow. And right at the bottom, if two people are holding their hands, they can touch the both sides of the, of the wall. When I saw it, I, I instantly realized how narrow it was and how long it was and how committing it was. Because, you know, even though it doesn't have a ceiling on it, once you drop into it, you can't get out of it. And the more you're in it, the deeper you get. And <laughs> the deeper it gets, the narrower it gets. And it's a very, um, it's a very tight, very committing, very long, straight flight. It's probably, if not the most challenging line ever anyone's ever flown, one of the most challenging lines. This is the most hardcore flight that's ever been done. The jump is highly technical. I mean, not everybody could fly the, the, the track that he's gonna fly. All depends where he's gonna go inside. Uh, I guess if he doesn't go too deep in the longest part, uh, he should be fine. I mean, I'm gonna have to leave from a helicopter. You know, I can't jump off the cliffs, but I leave from a helicopter and I can fly through it. At the beginning of the summer, or the mid-summer, I kind of got the attention that Chip was not maybe focused enough for, for the flying dagger, because it's a super demanding flight. The relative wind off the suit, you've got the vortices coming off either side, and that will create suction. And if you get too close on one side, and I don't know what the critical distance will be, they can suck you into the wall. And I kept having all these conversations. I mean, I've kept meeting a lot of the very, very like calculating, very, very punctual athletes. Have you worried about like, you know, there's going to be a verbal on both sides that are going to suck you in the wall if you're going to be close enough? And I started to get different reflections that, that it might have been even, even much more demanding than we were expecting. And, and then Chip said, yeah, I'll be fine, fine. I'll just do, I get really current. And I got worried. But then when I showed up to Wolvenstadt, I met Jeb and, and he was clearly spot on and he was focused and, and, and he was going for it. Wolvenstadt, it's not only the crack or, or as the jumpers call it, the Sputnik. There's another line you have to turn to your left and then you go into this like other crack. It's like long, straight, narrow place where you basically continuously fly under the tree lines. And it was a pretty good practice for Jeb to kind of fly a straight line, you know, go fast, whole ass, and, and, and establish the fact that he, he can fly straight consistently for, for a long time. Hello. Hello. How you doing, buddy? Good. Yeah. There's no question that it's about the same narrow as, as the flight we're gonna do. Oh, okay. It is super duper narrow and really, really long, so it's perfect. It's about as wide, you know, about the same width of what I'm gonna be flying when I get to China. Yeah, we're gonna be able to get it. Ah, that's super nice. And then as Jeb was practicing and flying that line, uh, just, I think, beginning of this summer, people started to fly even further out to the left, flying over this barn. Jeb published the footage on social media and YouTube uh, a couple of weeks ago, so, so a lot of those flights uh, were practiced. When he showed me the footage, he was super stoked. Like, a couple of the first times when he flew it, he was like so hyped and full of with natural high, and he was like, you know, dude, I didn't know if I could do it. Dude, I was nearly died. I just flew over the barn. <laughs> well done. You come over those houses, hello, and I'm like, <laughs> and you can't come over them high. I said to the god of death, not today, my friend. <laughs> Not today. It's always nice to see him when he's excited and he's happy about something that he just discovered. This place may be my most favorite place on earth. But I don't think it was enough. You know, I think it's good that he basically was 
flying similar lines, but he was not flying the exact line. The question was like, how could he do this jump over and over again and be comfortable with the location, be comfortable with the surroundings without actually risk of getting, getting hurt? So Jean will be telling uh, with us the new cool technology. Ah, oh, the Google about, Glass so. type stuff. Yeah. But luckily I was contacted by this Hungarian company Air Class and they had been developing um, augmented reality which means it's kind of a, like virtual reality where, um, where uh, they can create these kind of uh, virtual uh, tracks or put virtual uh, objects on the sky to, uh, with GPS. So we flew Jeb to Hungary to test the augmented reality technology and it was quite interesting to see. So he was able to actually fly the exact same flight track as he's going to fly here in air and, uh, and way up high above the ground so they had no risk of hitting anything. The first one I was going at and then all of a sudden it had like some weird glitch and then I was off the map and I totally went in. I hit the mountain and died horrible death. <laughs> so the second time I flew through it and I popped out and I could see the terrain. It was literally like I was really flying terrain. It worked really well, way better than I was expecting. We can utilize it as a practice tool for our athletes so they can fly these tracks and, um, and make sure that uh, they're super current and they know what's ahead of them. But also I think in the future there could be like, you know, competitive league. You know, people can even race different parts of the world at the same time and they can see these like, you know, amazing virtual tracks that they can fly through. This is probably going to be the most significant step we've done for the future and for the future of wingsuit racing. And I feel so privileged that I didn't smack against the mountain when I was base jumping 10 years ago that I got to live to this point and, and, uh, and see where we go from here. We're always pushing the evolution, like, you know, we have to challenge, challenge ourselves to, to elevate to the next level. And that's what Jeb has been doing continuously throughout his career, constantly creating new, new challenges and new boundaries and, and, and overcoming them. It will be the gnarliest proximity wingsuit flying I've ever done. I mean, it will be, without a doubt, the most difficult. So it's going to be very exciting.